Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare at Code UK. Welcome to this the 10th episode in this series where I show you how to build a website with Umbraco V8. Uh, what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to address this issue that we're having with Models Builder. Probably should have done this earlier, but never mind. Um, so we're going to address this issue with the IntelliSense and Models Builder so we can actually work with the properties of these models by just where we go like this. We go article and then dot and then we can use those. It's putting these in here for us because it sees that we've used them on the page already. But what we want is the same sort of experience as when you do like with this query string helper because it recognizes this. We could do query string helper and then dot and then it has it properly lit up with the correct data type and everything like that. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we need to do is understand why it's happening. So we're using pure live mode and we don't have our models included. And when I do try and include the models, I get a pro an error saying that I have duplicate models, and things like that. So what we need to do is use a different models builder mode. There are several models builder modes available to use. Um, we want to use a different models builder mode, which we can um, not have this issue with and one of them that i found that was appropriate for this that is not a high barrier to entry i think with the api mode you've got to do several things and learn about this so one thing that keeps it quite simple is uh, called app data mode so what we're going to do is we're just going to delete these so if we go to the models folder and delete these files that's the first step and then we go to web config and then we change what is pure live mode in the Umbraco Models Builder Models mode. Just change it to app data and save that and do a build, just do a rebuild. And then we're going to log into the back office. And we're going to go to the settings section. And when this loads, because we've just done a rebuild, so it would be a little bit slower. When it's finished loading, we're going to click on the Models Builder tab. So let's say if you went to settings and you saw just you were editing a doc type, and I'm telling you to go to the Models Builder tab, you might be thinking, well, where is it? How do I get to it? Well, in all of these sections, if you want to get back to the default screen, you can click on this bit here. So same with content. If you were editing a content item and you wanted to get to the redirect URL management screen and you're flicking between the sections like this and how do I get to it click on this bit here then click on that so same with settings click on this bit here then go to models builder so now we're at the models builder bit we just want to click on generate models um, it tells us that we're using app data models um, and it tells us that we can um, we can click generate models and let's go into Visual Studio and now we refresh the models folder. We reload on that. We can see all of the um all of the files. And now if we just include this folder, including project, now we've got all of those files in there. So um, when we do a, a build again, build and rebuild, and we've included those files, what we should find on these other pages where it wasn't liking the, the model like for article and things like that, where we're using Models Builder, you'll find that if you give, Intelli um, give Visual Studio a moment, it will be able to find those models and it will light up green for us on the class name. Any minute now. There we go. So it's lit up now, so it's happy with that. So the idea with this is I could just do at and then model and then dot and then we have all of these properties that we've been using but not seeing properly in Visual Studio. So we've got author name and main image and things like that. So that's what the benefit of this is. Let's just put the author name out on there for this article. And let's just uh, get see that on the screen. So if we go into that, don't think we've put an author in, but we can put one in. So if we just go into blog... Uh, we created lots of different ones so testing the models builder and then we'll put a pull seal in there save and publish and then refresh this so we'll go we're just putting that out uh, pull seal so 
in Visual Studio. We wrote that out, and the rest would have been the content of the article, but we didn't write anything. We can just add a full width row here, which text, hello, this is another test. Save and publish that, and then refresh. There you go. So yeah, that was just uh, showing you the Models Builder. So now we've solved our issue with Models Builder. The only thing you have to do is whenever you make any document type changes or anything like that, you just need to go into settings, go to Models Builder and generate models. And that's it. So um, that's solved that issue. And just another thing whilst I'm on, um, I, last week I was playing around with um, how emojis might look in the back office. So I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but um, I just had a play because I thought maybe I could put some things in these. Uh, so if we go into settings and then we go to compositions and we go to article controls, I just had the idea to start putting um, emojis in. So if, you, if you're if you on a Windows machine, to use emojis, you, I don't know if you know this, you do Windows and dot. So the Windows key and dot that brings up your emoji keyboard and that's how you can add these in so let's have a look for book or something like that content uh, yeah that'll do receipt i suppose it looks like content oh no maybe that one so i'll just delete and just do that again windows and dot and then book i'll use that one so that's my content emoji i'm just going to um put that in with a space in front. So this is just a label for the tab name. Now, don't take this as this is what we should do. Some people found it really ugly when I shared it on Twitter, but it's just an idea. Um, article date, so we, we could do Windows and Dot and look for a calendar, maybe. And then we've got author name. So we could do Windows and Dot and put a person profile in there. Or, yeah, let's let's try and get a person. There we go, in the people. I might just do a smiley face. Uh, that one I'll do. It's just for demo purposes anyway. And save that. Oops, hang on. Save. And then go into the content for an article. Let's just have a look what that looks like. There we go. We've got content, article, author. And up here as well, it puts it in front. I quite like it. Now, the difference here is because I don't have that on all of the content ones. I need to actually make sure that they all have it. Otherwise, they look like they're on different tabs. Let me just, any that have got a content tab, just put that in front. And actually main content can have it as well as its logo contact form let's just do this so this can be a message or email mail yeah we can do that success let's do a tick or a check error message we can do a cross Again, I'm not advocating this. Uh, this is just an idea. Don't quote me on it. Don't say that, oh, Paul Seal taught me how to do this and it's the right way to do it. It's just a bit of fun. Um, see what your editors think. You know, Have a play with it. See what you think. And if you like it, maybe you can use it. Footer. I like this one. You can do a foot. Social links, maybe a link. Uh, save that. Header controls. Again, we want the content one. I, I just copied that so I can paste it. Title. I was wondering what to do for title, and then I realized there's a one. Uh, oh, where is it? It's in one of these. It's at the end of one of these. There we go, a one, but like an H1. And then the subtitle, I can do a two. 
Windows and dot again. There you go. Save that. Main image. Remember to put the thing in front of content. I'll do a camera, I think, on this one. SEO. So this is all about search engine optimization. So I'll do a search. And I'll copy that and put it on the others as well. Why not? I can't think of anything specific for meta name, description, and keywords. Save that. And then visibility controls. I like this one. Um, do eyes. <laughs> and put the eyes in on the sitemap one. Oops. And what else? Oh yeah, Umbraco Navi Hide. There's a ninja. There we go. So save all that. Let's have a look at what it all looks like then. So in our home art, in our home document type, when we're editing the home page, we've got all of these in the navigation there. We've got these emojis in front of them. I'm not sure what your thoughts are. Let me know in the comments what you think to having emojis in these. Uh, we've got about Again, uh, blog, content for blog. Yeah, it's all pretty much the same. And an article, we'll just go into an article and just have another look. There we go. We've got article dates, title, author name, subtitle, main image. It's just a bit of fun. I'm not saying they should do it, but um, it was just, I've never seen it before. It was just an idea and Maybe it's this time. Is it time to start using emojis in Umbraco? Anyway, so that's it on this episode. Um, I hope you like it. Um, if you do, uh, please click like, subscribe to the channel. Um, also, if you want to buy me a coffee, you can do. Show appreciation. If you go to cochair.co.uk slash coffee. But uh, there's no obligation to do that. Uh, thanks to those that have done so far. I really do appreciate it. And... Um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. So thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.